In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can take a single animation, such as this punch animation, and manipulate it so that it rotates to point to any target spot. So to summarise the overall approach, what we do is we create a point where he will be punching if we make no modification whatsoever. So the default animation plays out and he hits this spot here, the red spot. And then what we do is we find the difference between this position where he's punching to and our target location and we offset his spine based on this angle so we're going to rotate spine 0 free bone from whatever angle is pointing at this to whatever angle points at this so what this allows us to do is turn a single animation where he punches one spot into one with some variance and there are limits to this you might not want to rotate it too far from the default spot and it may be best to use a different animation for different types of punches but this can be useful to just add some extra precision when your character is punching so for example if he's in a fight and he's punching at the enemy you can make it specifically target the head of the other person so to start off with what we're going to do is right click on whatever mesh you want to use so I'm using the SK mannequin because that's what the animations are for and go to create and then control rig and I'll rename this to tutorial control rig and if you double click on that to open up control rig so firstly what we want to do is be able to see the animation play out in this viewport so if you go to the preview scene settings at the top right under preview controller drop down select use specific animation once you've selected use specific animation you will see a list of animations below so here you're going to select your animation and in my case I'm going to use the punch which is the right hand punch so it's fist punch R and now you've got a timeline here which you can scrub through and see the animation play out or you can press play and it will play through the animation on loop and this animation I'm using has come from the movement anim set pro so firstly what we're going to do is make some setup where we can rotate the character or rotate any specific bone in global space or rig space so that's the space that the character exists in so this little world in this viewport is rig space or global space not the same as world space which is the actual world of the game so we want to be able to rotate any bone that we choose in rig space and we can't just simply modify the transform of the bone itself because that would be in bone space so that would be local to the specific bone we're rotating so first let's get a reference to the bone we're going to rotate so right click and search for get transform and the name of the bone is going to be spine 03 and we're going to do the same again but we're going to do a set transform so right click and search for set transform and under the item drop down we're going to select spine 03 and connect up the execution path and you get this error because there's no value plugged into this transform so what we do is we drag from this transform to the value and now we compile nothing changes because we're getting this transform and setting it here what we're going to do instead is make some modifications to this transform so drop down this transform to see it broken down into rotation translation and scale and we can also drop down the value to break that down into rotation translation scale so the translation isn't going to change we can just take the translation as it was of this spine bone and plug it into the output but now you'll see that his rotation has set to 0, 0, 0 for this particular bone so he's rotated at a weird angle so what we want to do is take the original rotation make our changes and then plug it back in so what we're going to do is drag out from the transform and choose multiply so search for multiply and this is a transform multiplication so it multiplies one transform by another so essentially what we can use this to do is rotate this transform by some of a rotation and the rotation we're going to use we can drag out to the left of rotation and search from Euler so E-U-L-E-R so this takes it from an Euler angle which is a simple XYZ and converts it to a quaternion which this transform multiplication wants it to be in so this will rotate whatever is input by this amount so drop down the result and take this rotation and plug it into our rotation on the set transform node so now you can see everything's back to normal but if we start entering values so let's say 45 on the z-axis you'll see that the character on his spine 0 free bone rotates by 45 degrees and if we do negative 10 he'll rotate the opposite way by negative 10 
and I'm going to set that back to zero. So now we've got a method to rotate any bone in rig space. But what we want to do rather than typing in the values directly is dynamically calculate how much he needs to rotate by to hit a different target spot. And the way we're going to do this is first we're going to identify where this target spot is. So if you go to the rig hierarchy tab on the bottom left, scroll to the bottom and right click, you can go to new, new control, and you can right click on this to rename it. So I'm going to call this initial target. And now what we can do is select this control that we just created in the viewport, press W to get to the translation tool, and we're going to move this into the position where he's punching to. So if you pause this animation and scrub through on the timeline to where he gets to the apex of the punch, so where you think that is connecting to wherever he's punching, just leave it around that zone. So on the timeline, you just have it paused there and then position this control to where he's actually punching. So you can just move it around and rotate the camera around as you need just to get it to the correct spot. And I'm not going to be overly precise with this and you might want to change the scale of this control. So if you go into the details panel, you can change the scale. So I'll change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, just so we can see a little bit more of where the actual control is. And now that you've set this position, what you need to do is right click on this initial target control that you created and choose set offset transform from current. Once you've clicked that, that sets the default transform of this control you've created. So now when you compile, it stays in place because its default has now been updated to the position that you've moved it to. If you forget to do the right click set offset transform from current, when you compile, it will just reset back to zero, zero, zero. So make sure you set that every time you move this position. So this position represents where he's trying to punch by default with no modification. And now we're going to create another control, which is for the goal target. So right click on initial target and duplicate. And I'm going to rename this to goal target. And just to avoid confusion, I'm going to click on goal target and in the details panel, I'm going to change the color of this to green. And now we have two controls in the same place. So you can move them around separately. We don't want to move the red one because this is in the correct spot. And this is now going to be the goal position. So I'll just move it away just slightly, just so we can see when things are working. I'm going to right click on goal target and do set offset transform from current. So now we can compile and those stay in the same place. What we want to do now is use this method that we created to rotate a bone in rig space. But rather than using manual values, we want it to automatically calculate the offset between where he's punching now, which is this red dot, and where he wants to punch, which is this green dot. So the way I'm going to calculate this offset is by using the aim math node. So right click and search for aim math. And what this usually is used for is giving it an input transform of some bone and giving it a target and making that bone point towards a target. So for example, you could pass in the head bone and the target and it will rotate the head to point at that target. But in our case, we don't want to rotate the chest to point at the target spot because as you can see, his chest is actually pointing far to the left whilst he's in the punch. We don't want to actually make him face the target. We just want to offset the animation from whatever the animation was already doing so that the punch actually lands on the new target. So the way we're going to use this aim math node is first, we're going to get a reference to the bone we're going to rotate. So right click and search for get transform. And we're going to select span zero three. And then we're going to get a reference to the transform of the goal. So drag in the goal target and click get control. And now we're going to drop down from these transforms. So the translation of the span zero three is going to be plugged into the translation of the input transform. So essentially what we're doing is telling it that the input transform has a position of this spine, but its rotation is zero, zero, zero. So it's just pointing straight forwards. There is no modification to the rotation. And now what we want to do is set the target. So I'll drop down primary and you'll see target. And we're going to set this to the translation of the goal target. So this node gives us the result in the form of a transform. 
but we don't care about the translation or the scale, we only want the rotation. So this should tell us the rotation needed to point the spine zero free position towards the goal target, which is this green sphere. But now we need to find the current rotation towards this red sphere. So we're going to do the same again. So I'll copy these three nodes and paste them underneath, except instead of using the goal target, we're going to use the initial target, which is this red circle. So now here we've got a rotation pointing towards the red and here above we've got a rotation pointing towards the green. So to find out the difference between them we take the rotation of the top one and multiply this, so this is a quaternion multiplication and we're going to multiply it by the inverse of this rotation and I'll leave a link in the description to go into more detail about how this quaternion multiplication works because this isn't an area I'm comfortable enough on to try to explain in a way that definitely makes sense so I'll just leave a link that you can follow up on or you can just copy this and never think of it again so if we take this rotation and search for inverse we can now plug this into the multiplier node and this will give us the difference in rotation between this that we calculated here and this that we calculated here. So if we plug this resulting quaternion from here into what we created before, so rather than just plugging manual values in directly, so where we were typing in say 45 to rotate in by 45 degrees, we're no longer going to use that. So we can alt click and it just removes that path. And instead we're going to use this resulting rotation. So now you can see that his hand has rotated towards this target point. So as we move it around, you'll see that he now punches towards this spot by rotating his spine zero three. And if we let the animation play out, you'll see that this works even whilst it's animated. So he still rotates towards this target point. And what this allows you to do is just from one single animation, such as a punch, you can make some variations and obviously there's limits because if you move it into some weird positions the rotation is going to get a little bit too extreme to be realistic so you might want to use different animations or some other approach but what this is useful for is to make some slight tweaks to the animation so it still plays out as normal but will hit the target spot more accurately so just an example, if this is an animation where he's punching another character, you could reposition this just so it accurately makes contact with the opponent's head. So this may be useful to rotate bones. So what you could do is select these nodes and right click and do collapse to function. And you can turn that into a function that you could reuse in different places. And likewise, this section calculates the rotation offset between pointing at one transform to pointing at another. So you might want to collapse this to a function and then replace some of the hard-coded variables such as the bone names and the targets with inputs so that you can reuse this. And now I'm just going to show you how you can change this system to work for a different animation. So we'll go to the preview scene settings and rather than fist punch and Scott R, I'm going to search for button and I'll find button push underscore RH, so a right hand button press. And I'm just going to unhook the forward solve just so we can see the default animation play out as it was. So you can see that he's pressing a button in front of him. So let's just pause and scrub the timeline to where he presses the button. So it's there. And what I'm going to do is select our red control, which is our initial target, and move that into position. So that should be moved to where his finger is touching. And remember, we want to right click on the initial target and do set offset transform from current. So now when we compile, it doesn't move. Now when we hook things back up, you'll see that he will point towards this green transform instead of the red. So we connect the forward solve to our set transform node. You can see he's now pointing towards this position. So as the animation plays out, you'll see he now points towards the green sphere. So a use case for this would be if you had a button in the game that the character can press but you're not exactly sure the position of the button or the position of the character, you can make it so that you input this position to control rig and it moves this green transform so that he'll always point towards the button. 
And the way that you would input this position into Control Rig is, firstly, we need to create an animation blueprint. So right click on the skeletal mesh and go to Create, Anim Blueprint, and open up this animation blueprint. And what we need first is our Control Rig. So search for Control Rig. Select the node, scroll down on the right details panel and select the Control Rig class that you've created. So in my case, it's Tutorial Control Rig. Connect up the output to the output pause result. And also we want to put in our input. So let's find the button. So we've got button push RH. So we'll connect that up and compile. And now we can see he's pressing the button. And if you select the control rig node and scroll down on the right, you'll see the section called input. And what we can do is tick the use pin for goal target. What this does is gives us an input called goal target, which is a transform. So anything we plug into that will be passed through to control rig and set this position. So this goal target transform, which is our control, will be set to whatever transform we plugged in. However, most likely what you'll be doing if you're finding some position in the world is you will have a transform in world space. So if you pass this a transforming world space, Control Rig is expecting this goal target to be in rig space, which is around the character. So that won't match up because you've passed it a world space transform and you want it to be a rig space transform. But there's an easy way to translate it from one to the other. So if you're using the input from a world space transform, wherever you use this goal target, so in our case it's here where we do get transform of the goal target, Instead of using this transform as it is, you would drag out from the transform and search for from world. This converts it from a world space transform to a rig space transform. So then instead of using the translation from this as it was input as the control, you would instead use a translation from this from world node and plug that into the target. And that will allow you to pass any world location or any world transform into this goal target and the control rig will use that value to manipulate the animation to point towards that spot. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and check the description for any relevant links including a mysterious course that someone created on a similar topic which you should buy for you and all your friends and let me know of any other areas that you'd like me to cover.